What's going on smart people? However many videos ago, I mentioned that I wanted to start doing my homework problems in LaTeX because my regular method of doing things on whiteboard and writing the correct work on the whiteboard on a piece of paper was just getting boring and dull and it was taking forever and I wanted to change things up. So since that day, I've had one homework assignment, which is classical mechanics, which is what you're seeing right now. I'm just going to show you the first question because it's not going to be blowing anyone's minds. It's really just, we're getting into Euler angles and rotations and stuff. So the first one is just showing uh, that matrix multiplication is associative. AB times C is equal to A times BC. Um, and I, I just wanted to go over how this whole thing is going so far. Honestly, I'm really liking this. I'm really liking doing this stuff in LaTeX because what, I'm, what I realized I'm doing way more now is I'm elaborating on uh, assumptions that I'm making or interpreting what I'm doing. So for this one, You'll see, there's like many paragraphs in all of the questions, which is kind of cool. It's something I never would have put the time in to do had I been handwriting my homework assignments. So uh, now, one thing that I want to mention is I think some people were getting the impression, maybe I gave the impression that I was just not going to be using the whiteboard anymore and just purely solving the problems in LaTeX. That's not really what I'm doing. I'm still, if there's things that I want to do some scratch work on, I'm going to do it on the whiteboard. That's just limiting to not do that. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of things are still going on the whiteboard. It's much faster to type it up in LaTeX in my experience so far than it would be to handwrite this stuff. But also some stuff that I'm solving, I can just do in LaTeX. It doesn't really take too long. You can just look at it and be like, this is what I would do next. Especially when it's something relatively abstract like linear algebra stuff where you're just, like here you can see that we're, we've got repeated indices that we're summing over. You don't really need to write that stuff out. Um, something that's been speeding up the process for me a lot is doing things like this new command that you're seeing here. What it does, some commands, some slash commands in LaTeX, you know, th th none of them are particularly long, but to have to write out slash epsilon every single time I want to use, say, the levi Savita symbol, it gets kind of boring. So what this thing says is instead of writing slash epsilon to get, uh, let's see, do I have an epsilon anywhere? No, I don't want to go too far down. It's just an epsilon. Instead of having to write that every single time, I'm saying I want to write slash ep. So doing these little short slash commands is pretty useful. Um, do the same thing for like basis vectors. Instead of writing backslash hat e underscore j, just write this, backslash ej. So it's pretty nice, it's really straightforward. Um, and it just, it just looks so pretty. It looks so pretty and now this also offers a bit of like searchability with my homeworks. So if I want to go back to my homeworks, I can just control F and try to find the section that I'm looking for. You can't really control F a, a sheet of paper. So, so far this is looking pretty good. I guess we can just go over this, this first thing a little bit. So it's like saying proof matrix multiplication is associative. I came up with three matrices D, A, and B. And I wanted to see if dab equals dab. And I did this in, in abstract notation. You could have just expanded this stuff in actual three by three matrices, but it's kind of unnecessary. So I just kept it super abstract, Einstein summation convention assumed, and was able to get to the answer. Um, is there anything else I want to say about this so far? I haven't had to test this yet for uh, things where I might need diagrams or uh, things like that, things where I effectively have to draw things. Like, um, it's not hard to do matrices in LaTeX but it's probably easier to do it on pen and paper. So that's kind of a compromise thing where it would probably have been nicer to do it on pen and paper. But so far with all the stuff that's writing, I'm really digging it. When I was reading the comments before about this, some people were saying that they, they wouldn't like the lag time in between uh, editing the code and then compiling it to see it actually update on the right hand side, which I completely understand. There is a little bit of get disconnect between that, but that's not a huge, that's not a deal breaker for me. One thing that I do kind of find myself doing though so far is with these problems, they've all been linear algebra problems. And with them, you know, we've been assuming finite dimensional matrices, a set dimension itself. So you could just expand these things in the matrix form itself. But I don't like doing that. So I've, I've noticed myself kind of going out of my way to express things like matrix elements in, in an abstract form. So instead of actually writing the matrix itself, uh, talking about its elements in kind of an abstract form, which I might not have done in on pen and paper. I probably would have just drawn out the matrix and did the multiplication and, and whatnot. But this is, um, I think I actually have been learning more or really fine tuning, I guess, my linear algebra doing it this way too, because I've had to, uh, for example, one of the problems was um, basically you had a three by three matrix and it was doing things like 
inverse of it, which is you know you know you know that you have to one over the term one over the determinant and then the cofactor expansion. But how do you talk about a matrix element where the matrix element itself is a cofactor expansion of the original matrix? It's like how do you how do you write that in an abstract way without just writing out the matrix itself? So things like that, it's actually been forcing me to think more, which I, I'm liking it. I don't know how many times I'm going to say I'm liking it. I think I've said all I needed to say. It's just a quick little update video about how I'm liking LaTeX so far for homework. Um, I, I encourage you guys to try it. Just try it once. Try it once for a homework assignment. See how you like it. Take some getting used to if you're not super used to LaTeX in the first place. So there's a bit of a learning curve. But I think it's worth it. I also wanted to mention before this video ends that the GRE is coming up. And for those of you who might be new, I have to retake the physics GRE for when I apply, when I reapply to the PhD program here, so I need to retake it. I've been studying. This next week, I really want to hit it hard, though, and I want zero distractions. And luckily, I don't have any other homework assignments after this one that's due on Tuesday, so I can focus solely on that. But one of the distractions itself is the whole video making process. I don't want that to get in the way of me studying for this. It's too important. So over this next week, uh, I'm not going to be recording regularly. If I do upload a video, great, but don't count on it is what I'm getting at because I, I really want to have tunnel vision going into this. I hope you understand. We'll go back to normal after this week. The GRE is on Saturday. So after Saturday, we're good to go. It's back to normal. No more missing days. Um, but like I said, I, I really, really want to focus on that and the time it takes to think of a video idea relatively like script it in a sense, record and edit. That's just time that I'm not willing to spend not studying. So hope you understand. Um, see you guys. Oh, that's awkward. Bye.